the first thing is planning commission thank you yeah yeah mm -hmm. after just like over there with right. microphone yes, sir. I'm Anthea Lavalle. What else can I tell you? I've lived in Woodstock for 19 years, full year, full time resident all that time. Raised my son here. He's 14 and a half, going on 25. <laughs> <laughs> and um, why do you have you been to any meetings, and why would you want to be part of it? Yeah, I've been to a meeting and tuned in to the business of the Planning Commission over the years. Um, basically, it's an opportunity for me to be of service, and I feel very invested in the future of this community, our son's hometown. And as I've discussed with Bill, I feel passionate about the Woodstock drive beyond my own lifespan as a place where my son and his future children can come back. Thank you. You know when the meetings are and you can make the meetings. I do, yes. Are there any questions? Um, Go ahead. Anthea, um, are you familiar with open meeting law? I am, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've reviewed the, the state document on open meeting law and absolutely. And have you had a chance to look at the town plan? I have. And it is a, a very thorough, extensive document full of all kinds of ambitious goals. And uh, yeah, I can't say I have it memorized, but I have it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? None for me. No. Laura, are you still serving on the planning commission? Are you still sending me? I just want to make sure if you should. Yeah. Yourself in the vote or not? Yeah, that's fine. I'm happy to recuse myself. I'm still a member of the planning commission for this next meeting, the December, because um, we're concerned about having quorum issues, and we're leading a project that I am leading, the short-term rentals, and then hopefully filling my seat in January. Okay. Anthea would be filling Nic Nicholas Seldon's vacancy. Yeah. Is there one opening? Right now, there's one opening. There's one opening and that Anthea is applying for, but there will be a future one when I step down. Okay. Um, since there's only one opening, is there a motion to? I would move to appoint Anthea to the vacancy in the Planning Commission. Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And I'll abstain if that's. Congratulations. Wow. <laughs> so now you'll interview with the trustees. Right. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And then next is additions and deletions from the agenda. Um, I don't have any um, additions, deletions, but I just want to make sure that there is an amended agenda that went on Friday. So uh, if you don't have a copy of it, there are some up here. Uh, there's a few more things to be added. Um, so I just want to make sure that I'm aware to everyone. I think Susan has her hand up. I was going to propose that we move item I2, which is a sewer permit into the vote section. This is a really long agenda. And my guess is these people are waiting um, for construction for us to vote on the permit. And I'm concerned we may not get to it. I think that makes sense. What was that? I do. I would, yeah, the sewer. So uh, that, so that made, uh, made an agenda, that would be J2, just so we're clear. Oh yeah. oh yeah, I didn't see the new agenda till this evening. Hi. Change the world kids. Are they on the agenda? Uh, no. I can't hear you. Oh, oh just I'm sorry. Um, the day was whispering. Yeah. <laughs> um, sorry, Susan. We had some guests. We're just figuring out where they're trying to be on the agenda. Or maybe they're not. Or maybe they're not so, on the agenda. Um, Change the world, a, kids. Do you want something? Oh, are you looking for a permit? Mm -hmm.
Okay. Oh, okay. That will be later. You, you guys can have a seat. Yeah, That's later on the agenda. Yeah. Yeah. Citizens' comments? Oh. Thank you. Uh, any citizens' comments? I don't no. see any online. Manager's report. Okay. Um, so a few weeks ago, we had a civility and inclusion in the workplace training um, that was put on um, with the help of Nikki Nurse, who's doing some HR stuff for us, uh, for all town hall employees, DPW employees as well. Uh, it's the first time in a few years we had this training. Uh, I think it went very well. Learned some new things for everyone, uh, and hopefully to uh, broaden everyone's horizons on what's acceptable and unacceptable in the workplace. Uh, so I was happy with that. Um, the village police have hired a new police sergeant. Uh, Chris O'Keefe is starting on Monday of next week. Uh, he comes with uh, experience working for the state and then also for a local uh, department as well. Um, Myself and Chief Swanson are going to organize a um, office hour slash coffee with the chief slash sergeant at the Southwoods Art General Store in the coming weeks. I want to reach out to them and make sure they're okay with it, but hopefully they'll be okay. Uh, so it'll be a location for the town people to meet as well. Um, so excited about that. Um, we have two DPW uh, workers going through CDL training right now. Um, one should actually be finished today, I believe, uh, or, or tomorrow, um, but the training might be postponed due to the weather. Uh, but hopefully in the coming weeks, we'll have two more people fully trained on CDL, and then also help with the plowing issues as well uh, over the winter. Um, we're still going through the budget. Um, the, the board's got the department head the, uh, the request on the budget. Uh, we're trying to finalize uh, my budget and send to the, the board as soon as possible on that end. Um, lastly, um, I think as have, a lot of people know, we've uh, been looking at the uh, Woodstock Aqueduct Water Company and what's going on with them. Uh, we had numerous routes. One was we worked with the Harvard Business students um, to um, analyze uh, the current uh, section of the Woodstock Aqueduct and then uh, potential for what could happen in the future with them. Um, they made the report to the Working Water Committee uh, last week. Uh, that committee is meeting on Tuesday night. Um, after that meeting, they'll have a recommendation for the select board on what they think could happen. Uh, and the select board will take that information and do with it what they will. Um, so that's been happening. Um, and then uh, just announcement that town hall will be closed Friday uh, as well as Thursday for the holiday. Uh, so the, the town hall will be closed both days as a holiday. Thank you. Um, so the book got the financial report. It's also in the booklet. Uh, I want to thank uh, Susan for pointing out some errors and where funds were allocated. Uh, so we'll be making those changes uh, in the coming days. Um, but beyond that, um, you know, kind of the status quo. Um, and I think around uh, January, we'll have a better idea of where we're at for the fiscal year. And uh, I can report then to the boards on um, any changes that need to get made. Any comments, questions? Nope. Um, so I don't see one. Yeah. One through the block and park. First. And if not, shows up in the The staff? Yeah. Wendy, you're up. Thank you. I'd like to introduce Ray Lindsay. Okay, um, can you come up so that um, come up here where the microphone is, the okay. camera, please? Good morning. Afternoon. Evening. Evening. Can you say your name again for the yeah. record, please? Sure, it's Graham Hankey. I live here in Woodstock, obviously. How are you all doing? Good. Oh, gosh. So, um, I am here as a representative of 
Okay. I, so I have the I draft the presentation. You made the prestige. I'm gonna see if we can get it on the board. Or are you gonna go off, off the cuff? That's I can go off the cuff. Okay. That's, okay. that's fine. Um. So yeah, I'm here as a representative for the Faulkner Park, and uh, we want just to provide an overview of what we've been up to over the last uh, last year since. Um, we uh and i'm not quite sure how long it's been since we've briefed the uh, board but i uh, just want to give you an update on what's happening how things are going um as a reminder uh friends of faulkner park is uh it's a nonprofit, and it was pulled together uh after J.P. Morgan Chase, which is the trustee of the Faulkner State, uh, offered the park back to the town of Woodstock along with some of money. And um, there were some differences of opinions about whether or not the town should accept that or not. And um, ultimately, the town decided not to accept the park. Um, but one of the things that came out of that was a recognition by all parties that some degree of local control was important to ensure that the park was being managed properly and that we had the park that we we wanted here at Woodstock. And so this uh, this entity was formed um, to me to provide that mechanism for local control. And Friends of Faulkner Park has no desire to own or control the land and has no desire to manage or control any of the money associated with the land other than what we might raise um as i mentioned i'm i'm the vice chair wendy marinan is the chair and then the other officer is uh, jack carter who's our treasurer and secretary and then we have three other directors uh one of whom is an arborist and the other two have uh, nonprofit experience and um, uh, and legal experience. So we bring a fair degree of experience sort of operating this type of entity. And we're really looking to establish a liaison role to be the local eyes and ears uh, if the trust is going to continue to manage the park, which we think that's the appropriate position. Um, it benefits from having eyes and ears on the ground here. And that was something everybody agreed to four years ago. Unfortunately, it hasn't quite emerged in a systematic fashion yet. Uh, so that's something we're hoping that we can change. Um, what have we been doing since uh, 2021? Uh, really the big things, we did achieve 501c3 status. We've done the necessary due diligence with the IRS to um, attain that status, which allows us to fundraise more effectively. Um, we have developed a park assessment, maintenance and improvement plan. And um, <clears throat> I believe, yeah, we actually have hard copies of those that we can provide to you. And, um, and that's an important document because it really does provide um, it's detailed enough that it provides resource allocation uh, guidance uh, for the first year for the third year really what um, it's detailed enough that we can plan against it and we can allocate resources against it and that's what we really think that the, the park needs um, we've been working on a right-of-way assessment and development of options for the right-of-way improvement along the front to the park along Mountain Avenue. And we've got some uh, some good options there. The work there includes uh, engagement with surveyors, with civil engineers, and with landscape architects. Um, we've been sharing results with the town periodically, but really we're at the point now to move forward. We need engagement with the trust and need to make some resource decisions there. Um, 
And of course, we have been trying to reach out to local vendors retained by the trust. Uh, we were working with Jim Worth until his retirement. We've worked with the current uh, person responsible for the mowing. Uh, that's an entity known as Rooted Gardens. And uh, we've talked with uh, Justin Romero from Timber Tender, which is the uh, entity that has been contracted in the past to support uh, tree work in the manicured portion of the park, as well as up the trail. <clears throat> So going forward, as I mentioned, um, our intent is to try to um, help create a local entity that provides local eyes and ears for the park. And again, to achieve any of the objectives that we have for the park, that has to happen. Um, the trust itself has been undergoing a lot of changes um, I think they're on their third trustee in the last four years. Um, that the newest trustee has expressed uh, much more willingness to reach out locally. And that's been um, really pronounced and much more positive than we've experienced up to date. So I think it's, it's quite an opportunity um, to move the working relationship forward. Um, so that's something that we really want to try to push. We have ongoing exchanges with the trust now, and, um, you know, we see that that long-term goal that we've had to emerge as a local eyes and ears here in Woodstock, working in partnership with the trust, we see that now within reach. To that end, I'll look at the last bullet on my um, my table here is um, we're wondering if the town and the town manager wouldn't, uh, I'm sorry, the municipal manager would be willing to uh, craft a letter to the trust um, that would applaud the expanded engagement between the trust and a local entity such as Friends of Faulkner Park um that would put stop and validate the need for ongoing local input and recognize that the park um really needs sustained investment and strategic guidance um my personal opinion the opinion of our arborist is that the park while it looks nice it is declining each year it sort of loses a little bit more and that is a trend that can be changed but to do so we need sustained investment it has to be thoughtful it has to be more than just an infusion of money each year um, there's got to be some type of plan we have a plan it may it may need to be um, adjusted improved but we need to have some some kind of starting point and then um, use that plan to guide multiple year investment that um, can get the park moving in the right direction. And that's essentially a recap of where we are. Are there any questions, comments? Graham. Yes. I was wondering, um, who are you hoping in terms of it says Faulkner Park needs ongoing local input? Is that just community members at large or is, is there more specific people you're looking to hear from? Really anybody. And Wendy, I know you, Wendy's done some systematic outreach of people using the park uh, as well as people that are on our committee. And, uh, but ultimately, yeah, we see ourselves playing that role our board is small and we've intentionally left some seats open. So that if, if uh, our relationship with the trust is becomes more formal, um, we could see expanding uh, the number of people on our board. Um, so that would be another way to do it. Uh, but yeah, pretty much anyone using the park and 
you know, the, that level of input would come through us and, uh, and then we could share that with the trust, but ultimately it would need to be reflected in the plan, which then would guide sort of sustained multi year investment. And it sounds like the investment firm is willing to pony up some money to help with this or that's still in the working stages. I think, um, you know, the trustee certainly doesn't want to have, he wants to get off on a good, good foot and, uh, they're not looking for any problems. And I think they would be willing to, um, work with us so that they understand what the park needs or buy into that and then agree to some some level of annual funding probably in excess of what they've been doing recently because their funding has really uh they're not paying a full-time caretaker anymore so the funding is as low as it's ever been and certainly um they could tolerate i think putting much more into the park and right now they haven't really gotten much feedback until we started talking to this current trustee more earnestly that anything was wrong and uh so at least that that communication back and forth is important so that they understand what's happening the trustees indicated that he wants to come visit in the spring and so i think that's a good a good step but if we can build that positive working relationship, I don't, I don't anticipate they're, they're going to resist putting more money in. It just, they're, they're, it needs to be systematic. I just wanted to add, can you hear me with the mask? It's Wendy Marin. And um, I just wanted to add one of our board members, uh, Jack McGuire, who also goes by Mac, is our current ambassador. Um, in terms of outreach and in direct dialogue with the trustee, his name is Carter Haynes. Um, we've, I started out with email with Carter and Jack followed up with more in a Zoom conversations and, um, and more email. Um, the exchanges have been enthusiastic and he's great. Carter Haynes is grateful and, um, and very respectful to what we could offer. So we're, we're really excited about the potential. Uh, the ball's now in their court. From um, We've sent maps, they'll have our plan. The ball's in their court. He's gonna set us up with their real estate division and dialogue as well. So it's, it's timely and it's happening. Um, so we haven't talked dollars and cents yet, but one of his biggest questions to Mac was surrounding liabilities directly he spoke directly um would would you guys be able to help us identify those kind of thing so we sense an earnestness and a, and a responsible approach yeah it's as but, positive as yeah we've as seen we, i think since yeah. we've been working yeah, this is the second together. trustee we've been in dialogue with so susan Comments, questions? No, that's very helpful. Do we need a vote to? Um, no, so the, the village trustees at the last meeting were in favor of me writing a letter. Um, if the select board is also in favor, I'll craft a letter. If the board's not in favor, um, I will just write one on behalf of the village. So. so we need a vote. I can just be in approval without it if, if no one's uh, has to be an official. I think that sounds fine. Okay. That's good to me. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for your time. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. And have a good Thank holiday. You. Yeah. Can, you too. can we just be mindful um, as we go forward of our very long agenda? And I can only be here for 35 more minutes. I think we're moving on to the voting section, correct? Yes. Yeah. Hopefully, Carrie, we can go through these quickly. Okay. There is an omission. Yep. So you have in front of you a letter from the listers. Um, it's just a property that was not included in the 2023 grant list. 
Uh, so this is just a vote by the board to agree to include it in the overall list. I move we add that property oh, to what? the grand list. Sorry, second. Susan, I just wanted to ask, how is this, um, how was this uncovered? Do we know? I think when they were going through and reviewing the grand list, they saw that it wasn't included. Okay. I think it had recently sold, and my guess is somehow the transfer tax return didn't get to the listers, was my guess, but Got just it. a guess. Okay. All right. Is there a second? Or what is it? I second it. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. That passed. Next is change the December meeting date. So I think this came up uh, with the date being around the holiday. Um, if there was a film by the board, if we could have a quorum that week or not. Um, so I think it's open up to the board if everyone can make that third week or if they wanted to look at a change in uh, meeting. So right now it's scheduled for the 19th. I will double check, but yes, yeah, so it'll be the 19th. I'm personally fine with that date, but maybe other people have conflicts. I would have to do it by Zoom again, which is not my preference. Um, I also think we've talked about having our representative come and talk about um, taxes, education taxes and and things affecting the school. I, I think that may be on the agenda. And um, it would seem to me that I think it's schools probably on break. So, you know, if we really want a lot of participation, having it not when people may have already left for the holidays makes sense to me. Do we have, um, do we know if the state reps are, are committed or? Um, one of them is, I think I would say 95% committed. The other one I told about today and they want to confirm the date before they can say they might not. So we're gonna move it to another Tuesday. Is that the alternative? So the alternative is, let me pull up my calendar again. Talk, sorry. Um, so the Tuesday before uh, the 12th would the trustees would, would be meeting at night. Um, so we could do the 5th, which would be in two weeks from now. Uh, you could do the 12th during the day, um, or you could uh, do a different day of the week, or we keep the 19th and, you know, I don't know if we have a quorum or not. And we got one yes, one on Zoom. The 19th doesn't matter to me. Okay. Does Wednesday the 13th work for people? In the, I hate, you know, well, it would give you a night off during the Christmas week, Eric, but I know it would mean two nights in a row for you. I can't uh, 13. What about the 14th? I can't the 14th. Hmm. Are you I, I imagine we won't have a very big turnout on the 19th if we keep it on the 19th. I know, and that's my concern. Because if we don't have the um, representatives come before January, we can't, you know, it's going to be much more difficult with their schedule once the session starts. Mm -hmm. Well, unless we can do it the 12th during the day. What about What's... the 11th? It's a Monday. The what? The 12th or Tuesday? Monday the 11th. I'm away, sorry. <laughs> I'm being difficult. <laughs> the 13th during the day? I mean, uh, the, the 12th might be good if that's a normal meeting day, at least the Tuesday. I'm fine with the 12th or the 13th. For break. I won't be here, but that's okay. I can do 11th, 12th, or 13th during the day, that's fine. I can do either the 12th or 13th in the day. I just can't do the 13th at night. Okay. Right. You guys just got to pick a date. <laughs> 13th. <laughs> can anyone not do the 13th? Let's do the 13th. 13th during the yeah. day. During the day. During the day. Okay. I know that's hard for you, Greg. I'll figure it out. Okay. I'm sorry, what's Susie? I said if you're looking for a uh, participation meeting, you can reschedule it to the 
So, I mean, we could always hold the meeting on the 19th and we could see if we could have a special meeting when the representatives are available. And do that private night meeting and yeah. Does that work for you, Susan? Yeah, I'm mute. Thank you. The 19th at, in the evening still? Uh, we have the regular meeting on the 19th and then have a special meeting whenever the representatives are, are, are available. Sure, I'll be on Zoom on the 19th again. Okay, so let's stick with the 19th. 19th. And if we can rearrange with our representative, then I'll and we can make a decision of a meeting. Okay. 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 Um, let's see. Uh, our so the next is the community recovery revitalization program. Um, so myself and the water working committee was working with the uh, Woodstock Aqueduct to try to get some state funding to do um, the repair on Elm Street under the bridge. Um, as we went through the process, uh, the state also recognized that the water company on them uh, themselves also applied for funding for the same project. Um, so it was brought to our attention that the town could try to apply for the same grant um, based on an assumption that if the town voted to, to buy the water company, these funds could potentially be available to, to go towards the water company. If the town decided not to pursue that, the funds would go away and then go to another project from another municipality. Um, so what I'm looking for is the uh, a select board's approval to apply for the grant. Uh, does not mean we'll get it. And does not mean if we get it, we have to buy the water company. It just means if we get the grant, decide to pursue buying the, <laughs> buying the water company, the uh, citizens vote to buy the water company, this money might be then be available to offset. Uh, so that's what's in front of the board tonight. Any questions? No, I think it sounds like a great opportunity if we yeah. can get it. Yeah. Um, you want to vote on that or? Yeah, please. Okay. Is there a motion to allow Eric to apply for the CRRP grant? So move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Go. Bond Street. Okay, so next I think Brooke is here. Uh, that can help us out a little bit. But um, so traditionally, and Greg, correct me if I'm wrong, most Vermont's were the three ro three rods. Yeah. Okay. Um, on Bond Street, uh, three rod measurements would be going to these properties, like the porches or the living rooms, whatever else. Uh, so what they're looking for is for the town to acknowledge that that street's not three rods. Uh, we did measurements. The average is 19 feet on that road. Um, so I think, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, Brooke, um, but the hope is that the town will say that's actually 19 feet, not three rods. Therefore, in the future, we can't use our right-of-way privileges to kind of tear down the porch to do something. Did I correct, say that e as best yeah. I could, Brooke? E yeah, we're hoping for the, the select board to declare Bond Street to be one rod, one and a half at most. One rod is 16, 16 and, and a half, half feet. Yeah. And one and a half rods would be 25 feet. Yeah. yeah. That's what it is now. Uh, the marks then, the average is about 19 when you went out there, yeah. So we want to keep it at 19. Yeah. I mean, if they're willing to do a bond, uh, a rod and a half, I think <laughs> that gives, uh, gives us a little more leeway. Wide as possible. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that's why, that's why you're here, right? Yeah, perfect. <laughs> I'm looking at you. <laughs> um, so I don't know if, we, if anyone has any questions for um, Brooke, who's the, the attorney for the landowners. I don't. Anyone, any questions? Well, I, I just have a general question, not necessarily for Brooke. Hi, Brooke. Um, it, the, would the one and a half rods include, I mean, normally we also have a right of way kind of on somebody's lawn just in case that's needed. Um, is that included in the one and a half or is that in addition to the one and a half? Is that directed towards me, Susan, or the town? I, I, I whoever has the answer. <laughs> my, my understanding is it's included. Yeah, that'd be my understanding too. Okay. 
Roger, come on. Yeah, just a quick question. Um, there's currently, there's a kind of- Oh, so you say your name for- yeah. Oh, I'm Roger. sorry. My name's Roger Logan, Woodstock Village, et cetera. Um, um, currently, there's a kind of like painted on sidewalk there. Um, and that is a necessary sidewalk. Um, so I'd just like to make sure that this doesn't affect that. For, the, for those of you who aren't familiar, there's no actual sidewalk, but yep. there's a white line a that separates maybe two and a half feet. Okay. Um, on the, I guess the east side, no, the, yeah, the west side of the road. Okay. So I just like to make sure, and if you're, it sounds like you're not going to get any narrower on the street, you're just kind of moving the, the right of way in, it sounds like, basically. Well, so I think, yes, in a, in a sense that if we did the three rods, we'd be going, you know, into, into somebody. Yeah, yeah, so this is kind of is narrowing okay. up. Okay, all right, so just, I, just as long as that, I, otherwise I have no video. Is there a so I, I, I guess if there would be a motion just to make sure Roger's correct, we can just have the motion to ensure that the rod and a half would not impact that sidewalk. Okay, make a motion to accept the rod and a half wide road and with the understanding that it will not impact the painted sidewalk. So moved. Second, second, second. all those in favor. Aye. Aye. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Brooke. Thank you. Yep. The EMD representative. Yep. So this is uh, fairly straightforward. Uh, currently, I'm the EMD representative for Woodstock. Uh, they're requesting that the town vote on a second one as a backup. Uh, the recommendation is um, emergency services member. Uh, so I thought the arbitrator would be Chief Green. Uh, I talked to him. He's okay with it. Um, so it would just be a simple uh, motion to make uh, Chief Green the uh, second voted member of the EMD for Town Woodstock. So a motion to make David Green the second representative for the EMD. So moved. Second. A second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. No, we'll uh, no we have the agenda planning and the drug alcohol policy. I mean, I'm I'm ended. Oh, we can do the two permit if you if you want. We we'll, we'll have two more in the number of votes. Carrie, how much time do you have? I can be here for twenty two more minutes. Okay, I think the agenda and the drug shouldn't take too much time. Okay. Um. So the agenda planning. Um. This is something that um was one of my goals when I started. It got sidetracked with everything going on. Uh, so I want to thank the trustee chair, Stephen uh, McElroy, for helping me put this together. Um, but what is kind of the timeline of how the agendas will work going forward? Um, for the trustees, we're gonna, they voted on this, so we're gonna put it in place uh, in March after town meeting or their village meeting. Uh, and so I'd recommend the same thing. So we have the next three months to kind of tell people about what the process is gonna be like and then going in March, this is kind of how we would put our agendas together, um, make sure there's communication ahead of time afterwards, and kind of really just codify what the process is going to be like. Okay. Any questions? The only thing I would add is in the it, it's somewhere in between the 14 and the 10 days when the agenda is locked is the rest of the board should see a proposed agenda. That. Okay. Anything else? Sorry, I've always got something to say. No. Um, we know that. <laughs> I'm not sure if it belongs in here, but I just want to make sure that we are. I mean, I, I appreciate the attempt to systematize everything. I don't see the public the public um, announcement in this timeline. Um, and I realize that's to some extent covered by just whatever the laws are, but. What, and what do you mean by well, the posting the, the posting the meet the warning of the meeting the agenda? Oh, um, yeah, so that I mean that is uh, by state statute, so it has to okay. be forty eight hours before. So you don't need to add anything in here to no, just be repetitive. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Well, thank you. 
Okay. Do we need a vote on this or? I would prefer a vote, yes, okay. so we have a vote of five, please. I, I would. Uh, and we can have the make, sorry, make the motion to include the agenda being sent to the board members uh, in that time frame. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would move for a motion to approve the timeline with the pr proposed agenda being sent out to the board members between the 14th and 10th day, Susan? I'd make. Okay. Yeah, I'd make that motion. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That passes. Drug and alcohol policy. Okay, so Woodstock does have a uh, drug and alcohol policy for uh, CMB operators. Um, however, it's come to attention we haven't really been following it uh, in the past. Uh, so when, uh, and I should say, I can't imagine Nikki Nurse, who's been doing the address stuff for us, um, was digging into this, um, found that as an issue. She pulled the old policy up. She realized it probably needed to be updated. Uh, so working with VLCT, she put together what's in front of you. Uh, most of the language is approved by VLCT. Uh, and once it's, if it's voted by on the board, um, then we'll put it into place and, and work backwards and, and catch up. Okay. Any questions? Laura? Okay. Um, I have just two questions. Um, on page nine of the agenda, which is page 41, I guess, of the policy. Yeah. Um, I guess I was just wondering what, <laughs> why we wouldn't want to have a drug test or, or dictate that our drug tests are administered um, and are under any of these three conditions, human fatality, bodily injury, disabling damage to any motor vehicle requiring tow away, why we would be, why there would be a condition that that is on um, citation issued to the driver. Wondering if it is better for the town to just um, have the policy be we drug test under any of these three conditions, regardless of whether or not there's a citation issued. I mean, it absolutely can be. This is just a, the okay. guidance we got from BLCT. So if the board wants to make that change, I mean, I think we can. Um, I, I don't, I think I just want to run it by VLTT beforehand. Um, if the, that was a vote to confirm, we're not doing anything there to disagree with. So you're saying for. So I'm fatality. saying just get rid of the second column altogether. You're like, regardless of whether or not there's a citation, we issue a drug test under oh. any of these three accident conditions, which are human fatality, bodily injury with immediate medical treatment away from scene, disabling damage to any motor vehicle requiring tow away. But then that would, if we change that to yes, that means we have the test must be performed. Yes, yeah, so I mean, that means if, um, so if everything's yes, they'd all be yeses. So, yeah, be yes. so that means uh, a plow driver plows into a car, that person is, so I mean, I guess this, I guess the example is plow driver um, is in an accident where a driver slips on ice, hits the plow, that person is taken away from the scene. Um, we'd be required at that point to test the person for for drugs. Yeah. Um, this is probably the difference. Where in this, we wouldn't have to. Unless a citation was issued. Yes. I don't know if anyone else has thoughts. That was just my. I mean, it seems like these are all pretty big accidents. <laughs> so it seems pretty reasonable to test for drugs or alcohol, regardless of whether a citation is issued. Susan, you're muted. I know I was reading. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I think that's accurate. I do want to make sure with um, the LCT and the insurance, I think Passive probably had a part in this. And I think we need to run changes by them. Yeah. Comment? No, either or. Good to do. Right. Another question. Um, and I just wanted to clarify the table on page 16 for the drug cutoff and testing limits. Um, this is just nine, I think nine, nine drugs. And I just want to make sure that that means that the cutoff is zero for anything that's not on this list or prescribed. Because this is a short list.
So I guess my understanding is looking at this table, these are the the substances that can be found in blood, yep. but under a certain amount. And anything else over zero would be uh, would consider would be considered a positive test and all oh, right, yes, I understand what you're saying. Yes. Yeah. And that would be my understanding as well. Okay. Have alcohol in there. Yeah. I believe it says somewhere where it's, I don't have the page on me, but it's, I think it gives the, the breathalyzer. Breathalyzer, yeah. Okay. I just, uh, 0 0.02. Yeah, 0 0.02, yeah, on yeah. page 12. I think it's because it's a different test. This would be a urine test. Yeah. And the other would be a breathalyzer. So, so good. You all set? Yeah. Susan, you gonna say something? Um, yeah, I, Eric, I had just sent you a couple cleanup things, if that can oh, get. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. We'll make we'll make the changes. Yeah. I I think Nikki might already. I can't remember. Yeah. Um, it was it was um, we were the document refers to OS, OS occupational drug testing company, which is now known as DISA. So I thought we should refer to the correct company. And select board is two words. <laughs> and we want it to be one. Make the changes, yeah. All right, so I would make a motion to accept the drug and alcohol policy with the changes that were discussed this evening. And it's Susan sent to Eric. The motion? Pending Please. review, pending review with BLCT. Yes. I would make that motion. Okay. There a second? second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Now we're doing a swoop. Okay. Yeah. So just um, interior cast iron waistline is showing signs of deterioration. Um, were we going to, oh, yeah, sorry. No, uh, and plumber needs some pipe. Uh, replaced beyond foundation wall. Sorry, Susan, go ahead. Nothing. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, that was it. I was just reading what the permit was uh, asking for. I would move that we approve the permit for 1176 West Woodstock Roads um, sewer repairs. Do any permits needed from the town? Nope, this, this would be it, yeah. Okay. Is there I'll a second? second? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I don't know if I think Susan had, uh, sorry, uh, Terry has like 10 minutes left. I don't know if we want to go into the Board of Commissioners or if we want to. Terry, would you prefer to be involved in the First conversation or two, or go into the abatement requests. Do you have a preference? Um, let's. No, we can we can do some discussions. Before. Okay. Thank you. Okay, main wastewater treatment plant. Yeah, so there's uh, two things I want to touch on here. Uh, one is uh, I think the chair and vice chair were involved in meetings um, last month. Uh, with our engineers, Hoyo Tanner, um, their recommendation to push the vote for their uh, renovation of the new main wastewater plant uh, to next November um, instead of this coming March, which was originally planned. Um, and that was based just on the timeline we have between now and March. They didn't think it was enough time to fully educate the public about what needs to get done uh, and the cost of it and what would happen going forward. Uh, so that's one. The second thing I want to just uh, point out is uh, we want to start having these conversations about the, the plant, the cost of it, what the plan will be. Um, I think, as we all know, the current ordinance for, for sewer for the town says that any debt or bond will be paid by user fees. Um, we're talking about a large uh, purchase here. Um, so I think it behooves the public for the, the select board to start talking about well, who will pay for this, what that will look like. Um, 
in case it does pass, we have a plan and we can go to the, the residents and say, this is what our plan is going to be. Well, well before the vote happened, so or everyone's on the same page. Um, so I don't know if there, um, I had discussions with Susan about potentially forming a subcommittee that could look at the cost, uh, or if we want to have this on the agenda and just start talking about options and have the public come and give the feedback uh, over the next few months. We have a subcommittee once and we disbanded because we're going to come to a decision. Um, so I think maybe getting some public comments and then putting the committee together makes more sense. You legislate, I just. I, <laughs> I said you legislate. I, I put in. No, I just I was just looking up to see if there's any. Susan's got a hand up. Yep. Yeah. So, I think I'm kind of a process geek. Um, my former life made me such, and I think the first step is to address the ordinance because I don't really think we can talk about um, any kind of sharing with that ordinance out there. So I think we should warn it. Uh, appropriately, I think just putting on the agenda main wastewater plant doesn't really give people notice that about what we're talking about. And I think we need to discuss amending that ordinance so that we then can discuss a sharing of, of costs because right now we technically shouldn't be talking about a sharing of costs with that ordinance in place. So my recommendation would be that we first have a properly warned meeting where we discuss the ordinance and I would be interested in having a committee. I think, you know, the last committee, um, which I was on, uh, there were some attempts at meeting in the middle and it, it, it didn't work out. But I, I think in, in my mind, this is a matter of math and trying to figure out what the appropriate share is. That seems, okay. it seems like a reasonable place to start and then to move into public feedback and getting a committee together. I think that Susan's right, getting the ordinance first and then moving toward a committee to work on things. Um, Susie, I live in Woodstock Village. Um, have you ever considered, like we went through this and we went through a lot of discussions with people privately, et cetera. Would you ever consider using an arbitrator to sort of figure out what that is? Because it does seem to me like everybody votes for self-interest. Not that that's wrong. I would do the same, but just wonder if a third, per, per, you know, third party can be involved in that and sort of make a fair decision. Thought. Jill has her hand up. So Susan. Well, one thing we might consider, and and that that may work, um, and it is being demonstrated by the work on the, that the Harvard Business School group are doing on the water company is to get them a little to get some people involved who will do some analytics so that instead of having discussions in the committee based on opinions you actually have alternative scenarios to work through and somebody has perhaps put all these numbers together for us I will say being on the uh, aqueduct working group or whatever we're calling ourselves it I, I was a little bit dubious about how useful the Harvard business students would be, but it was tremendously useful to look through all the different options, all the different scenarios, what the implications of all of them were. Um, so, you know, I think that that's a really good suggestion here. Roger? Uh, yeah, I just want to address... Um, Susan, what Susan proposed, and I just really have a question. Is there a way to write an ordinance? I, I mean, if I'm if I'm understanding correctly, Susan, um, you're saying that we can't really discuss it because right now the ordinance is essentially cut and dried. Is there a way to write an ordinance that happens before there are discussions? Can you write it vaguely enough so that essentially the ordinance says we can do within X parameters, we can do this. So I just want to make sure that if, if, if the first step is to address the ordinance that theoretically doesn't allow us to actually have this discussion, um, how do we make sure that that ordinance then is not essentially putting something in place that's locking us into to one solution or the other? So, and I don't know enough about how the legislative process 
works. If you can just write an ordinance that says, we're going to talk about it and come up with a plan. Great. I just don't know if that works or not. Thanks. Susan's got a hand up. Yeah. yeah so, so if I, I'm happy to address that. I mean, in my mind, I think the step is to amend the ordinance to say, you know, it's a user pay system, except in extraordinary circumstances, in which case the select board can decide upon an allocation or whatever body we, we come up with. I'm not saying that's the perfect solution, but I think I think that we need to, at least in my mind, amend the present ordinance to recognize that we have, you know, a fairly large expense coming that that you know maybe wasn't anticipated when that ordinance was passed. All right, so we need a special meeting for that. I'm assuming, or do we just do the ordinance now? Do that now. Um. I was not prepared for that question. Um, <laughs> I just I want to discuss you guys about my ordinances already. Um, I think it might behoove the board to maybe take a, a breath and, you know, maybe in January the, we have the ordinance because okay. um, then it'll be processed and it'll have to be out there for a certain amount of days and they can be objected to and all that stuff. So, okay. Right. And I think even Susan said just extraordinary events, what's that? So you want to be probably have a, a dollar figure or something um, that would make some sense because then you can get the legation of what is extraordinary. extraordinary. Yeah. I know that's the worst issue, but I think we want to make sure we're clear on whatever we call it. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll just pull a number out of our hat today. Okay. And I think we need to warn it more specifically so people know that it's going to be discussed. Yeah. Okay. Up the funds. Um, Okay, so uh, originally Mark Hunter was going to be here to discuss uh, other options for opera funds, um, but with the pending storm overnight, uh, I had him go home to rest in case we had to be plowing out early in the morning. Um, so I don't have much in, in the way of uh, opera funds. Uh, I will say a few things, though. One, um, I, I think ever since the opera funds came out, um, there's been conversations about taking money back from the states and municipalities. Um, those are always kind of on the fringes um, in the last two months or so has really seeped through in the national conversation. Um, I've also heard from other town managers them being told to spend your funds as quickly as possible. Um, so why think we want my recommendation to the board to allocate the rest of the funds probably by the summer um, and hopefully have them extended by uh, before November. Um, so it kind of is an overarching, you know, I won't, I won't do anything tonight, but I think we'll be aware of making sure we allocate the money at some point in the next six months or so. Um, as a reminder, we have about $117,000 left. Um, one thing that we can entertain, um, the Carlton Hill Road project, um, the town allocated $300,000 for it. Uh, it's going to end up being about $370,000 and everything's all said and done. Um, that's because we had to remove the trees on the slope ahead of time. And then we're now going to re replace the guardrail uh, for safety reasons. Um, we do have some money in capital reserves we could use for that as well. Um, but that's just an option we can have kicking around in the back of our heads going forward. Um, but like I said, with Mo without Mark here, I don't want him to not be able to give you the board some ideas or infrastructure. Um, but we just figured it would be best you have his time to get some sleep. Yeah. Okay. Go from there. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know if anyone has any comments of opera funds. Uh, yeah. Did we a survey last year? That was, was, I don't know if it was the town or the village that sent out a survey on yep. spend it. Is that an, an option for doing the balance or? We, we can. I think the original allocation the town uses kind of based off some, some of that. Um, but I can pull both those numbers and send it back to the boards. Okay. Yeah, Roger. Yes, Roger. Why don't you Sorry, just. just yeah, um, we'll give you a seat going forward. Yeah. <laughs> gonna run a um, could you get a um an accounting of what's happened with with the ARPA fund project? Because I haven't heard anything since the initial vote, and I'm sure things have happened, but it would just be interesting to see who's gotten the money, how's it, have they done what they said they were going to do with the money, et cetera, et cetera. So internally, we have uh, so we ordered the the uh, air packs the fire department requested. Uh, we did the work on Carlton Hill as as well. Um, the ten thousand dollars of beautification for South Woodstock is still sitting there as the South Woodstock committee figures out what they want to do. Um, and then the money that has allocated to the other 
uh, centers. Um, I haven't heard back yet, but I've been in contact with them, you know, uh, over the last six months or so. Okay. But once we have a final invoice from yeah. them, we can report back. Okay, because I know there was money to the Thompson and there was money to Billings for blowing up a dam, which was exciting and all, but yep. I don't know if that's happened. So I'd just be interested. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. All right, so we'll move on to the dispatch contract. Yep, so um, before Robbie Bush um, retired, uh, he had uh, submitted an RFP with the sheriff's office to do the dispatching uh, out of our ESB building. Um, we won or we were chosen for our RFP um, based off of the timing of that, the flood, and his retirement. Uh, no contract was ever put together or um, signed. Um, so we have been dispatching for the sheriff since July 1. Uh, we are now working on a contract to, put it, to get in place uh, to have it for the, the, this fiscal year. Uh, so we are working on that. We'd hope to have it ready for tonight, uh, but we weren't able to. Um, but I just wanted the boards know that that is happening. Um, I don't have the total number in my head, but it's about forty-seven or forty-eight thousand uh, dollars was the revenue that should come in uh, through that contract. Three year. For it's only a one-year contract. Um, it's a three percent increase uh, if they extend going forward. Uh, I don't want to speak for anyone, but my understanding is the sheriff so far has been uh, pleased with what they received so far. I guess my question would be, do we have the capacity to? Yeah, so that was one of the conversations um, I had with, with former Chief Lish, um, and we do have the capacity. I checked in with the dispatchers about two weeks ago, and they said they, they were doing fine with it, and they had no issues. We'll wait to see the contract. On meetings up. Yeah, so this is uh, not just me, finally. Um, but one thing that came to my attention, uh, looking into some stuff, um, I may have the years wrong, but I think in like 1978, 1979, um, the town of Woodstock voted that any petition over $3,000 uh, would be on the Australian ballot, not on the floor. Um, a year or two later, they reversed course. Uh, and voted that down. Um, then as far as the town clerk and fine, there was no other vote since then uh, to, to, make, to, to change it. Uh, so basically, at uh, this town meeting, uh, everything will be on the floor for votes uh, besides the uh, appointment of officers. Um, so there are two options the board can look at. One is to um, potentially have a special town meeting uh, before town meeting. Uh, would this be the only thing on the agenda uh, to vote that a petition over three thousand uh, dollars can be on Australian ballot, or to have that on the um, ballot for this town meeting and have the vote on on the floor to go back to Australian ballot um, is an option, but that's just a change they'll have to be ready for uh, one way or the other. So I just want to bring that up as step one in this conversation. Um, so there's that, and if there's no co uh, questions on that, we can kind of go into a larger, what we're going to look at a town meeting. I know it's a few months away, but with the holidays and the Christmas and New Year's and the deadline, uh, we're going to be a bit generated before we know it. Um, so I just want to give the opportunity to look for the board members to kind of discuss ideas or thoughts they have for town meeting. Um, I don't know if anyone wants to hop in. I just had a quick question um, on the on the special articles. There, I know there must be a deadline when the town meeting, when the um, annual report has to be printed, and so we really need to know whether those are and whether and when ballots are printed. So I think we have to have a decision prior to ballots being printed on whether or not the nonprofits are going to be on them or not. So just keeping that in mind and maybe checking with Charlie. Yeah, at this point, all that would be on the floor. Okay. If, if the board makes no changes between now and town meeting day, then everything will be on the floor except for the um, preliminary officers. And uh, what are you ask? What are you looking for from us about um, town meeting? Like, are we 
to a point of discussion discussing dedication of town um, report so one, or... was, one was that acknowledgement that that's the way with do it this year and the board needs to decide if they want to have that on the a, a petition to change it uh for for going forward um the other is you know i think we discussed having maybe the nonprofits who have a petition come in and, and talk uh, go through what they ask them for the money for how they're going to use the money uh, maybe uh, examples of what they use the money for in the past. Um, I also discussed with um, the chair of there's a potential of us uh, as a board uh, voting ahead of time for uh, approval or disapproval of every article um, as well to kind of have a discussion before town meeting. Uh, so that's also an option we can do. Um, again, we don't have to decide anything tonight, but I think we should start talking about these things and. Also, I know some of the board members had some ideas, so I wanted to give them some space too to talk about these things too. Mm -hmm. I think it's important that we are just, yeah, have as much clarity as soon as possible as to how we're voting um, so that we have communicated at everybody to make sure we have turnout. Um, and I think I had a question, which was just that, like, for the ordinance that was reversed, it says amounts over $3,000. So if we we are abiding by the reversal, does that mean there's still stuff on the Australian ballot or no? It would just be the officers um, unless, I'd have to get the, the wording, but potentially if there was a petition for $2,000, that might then be able to be Australian ballots, but yeah. anything that was $3,000 and a penny because I've seen a petition for under two thousand dollars. Um, I think it's I, my personal opinion. It's very confusing to have different measures voted different way. Officers, they would also be. I think we voted on the floor on Saturday last year. We voted officers by Australian ballot on Tuesday. Is that usually? Yeah. yeah. Yep. So if we were to do a special meeting. We'd have to want it and get the public's input on whether or not we go Australian ballot or not. Yeah, and what you want to be honest with the ballots. Um, or you could just wait to tell me and have that be one of the things we vote on the floor to go to, to Australian ballot for whatever, or just petitions or more things, whatever the board wanted to do. Any input? Susan, Kerry, Greg? Could we possibly warn this for December and get people's input as to what they would like, or you know, just to have a discussion? Yeah, I think we can. I, I the only, I think at that point we may be running out of time. If there was okay. a desire to have a special town meeting ahead of time, um, I don't know if that's even feasible at this point. If we're really being transparent to try to warn something, get it up, so okay. then be ready to warn the real one <laughs> after that. Um, but yeah. I do like your idea of having um, them, each of the people that have a special article come to a meeting and discuss things. I don't, I don't know if we have to go as far as pre-voting as a select board, but I would, I would really like to hear what, where the money that they've received in the past has gone to benefit the town of Woodstock. Good idea. Susie, did you have a question? Yeah, um, just some clarity. Are you talking about um, taking some of the special articles and voting them uh, on town meeting as opposed to the um, Australian ballot? Yes. So, I'm sorry. I have no, no, I think. I don't think that that's a really good idea because um, not a lot of people can make it to you know town meeting. Um, and we don't have, and, and so much is voted on if you happen to be there. And there's lots of people who can't make it there because they work, they have children, lots and lots of reasons. If you vote on it, they get a 12 hour uh, period to, to, to show up at the poll. Yep. And so you get a lot more input, direct input that way. Yep. So, as much as you can keep, I think that the entire budget, everything should be on the Australian. But, and I realize maybe we can't do it that way, but the more you um, allow people to vote for it, you know, the better it is, and Australian ballot is absolutely the better way. So I'll say two things. One is, 
this year we have to go back to everything on the floor based on the laws we found that we weren't following. Uh -huh. So so this year, unless something happens in the next like three weeks, um, everything will be on the floor at town meeting. Now we the board can put a petition in there to change that for next year, and you can go back to just having the articles Australian ballots. Um, there's also been some municipalities that have voted to have everything Australian ballots. So that's also an option where the budgets, the whole thing could be Australian ballots. Um, but that would be up to either a resident's petition or the board deciding that they want to do that. Well, I encourage the board to do that then. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, um, I appreciate that we found a law and we have to follow the law, and that makes sense. I think it is time to start a bigger discussion, not for, for this year, but for following years. I mean, I many of you know that I think town meeting is a ridiculous way of doing business for in the modern world. Um, so I think it would behoove us to start a discussion about what what what's the advantage of 78 people voting on the budget, which is what happened last year, um, rather than the three or 400 or whomever voted on the Australian ballot. So I think it's time to start that discussion. Obviously, again, not for for the coming town meeting, but but what is what are the advantages that we get out of having a town meeting and what are the disadvantages? Thanks. Thank you. So well, I've got so, yeah, Carrie, do you okay. have I was just gonna say I've got a scoot, but it does sound like a special meeting where people can come and discuss and we can think about alternatives going forward would be useful and needed. Um, it is a big discussion. Um, and I also like, you know, including some measures that give increased transparency around the people who are applying for money from the town. Um, you know, previous in previous years, we contemplated asking for their budgets and seeing how much of their resources were actually allocated to Woodstock in particular. Um, so I think, you know, there's lots of different ways we can make the process uh, more available to everyone and, and to give everybody a greater deal of clarity on what they actually are voting on. So. Regional energy coordinator. I'm gonna go. Uh, Night, everybody. Night, Thanks, Harry. Thanks. Uh, Jeff, are you there? Yes, sir, I am here. Okay. So Jeffrey Grout is the current uh, regional energy coordinator for Woodstock. Uh, I believe it's a year to year agreement. Uh, they're requesting a, another extension for next year. Uh, and the board asked Jeffrey to come and kind of give a presentation. I believe what he's done so far and what they could do in the future. So there he is. Hello, yes, um, uh, thank you for having me again. I'm Jeff Grout, the intermunicipal regional energy coordinator. Um, known as IREC. And I did submit a report that lists the projects that are either current, um, that, were, that are either pending, um, recently completed or in process. So um, I'm ready and willing to go over any of those if there's any questions. Um, it's basically projects. Um, I started in February, 2024. So many of these projects were already proposed and in progress. I, and um, I've been working on those, and this is actually a good time to have this discussion because I want to make sure that we're um, focusing and getting direction from you, the select board, and the town manager about the energy projects that are really important as we move forward in, into 2024. So um, I can either answer questions or get into more detail. I'm not sure. Um, if you've had time to read it, that would be good, or at least skim through it, or I can go over some highlights. We might go over some highlights, Jeff. Sure. Yeah. So um, basically, the, the primary um, responsibilities of this position is I, I propose and work on projects um, and receive direction from the town of Woodstock and the town manager to work on high priority energy projects. Um, you also have a very involved um, 
group of citizens in Woodstock that are really knowledgeable about energy projects and concerned about climate. And this all ties together. These are projects that are, I think, key to the town or to any town. I work with five other towns as well. And they can um, really help cut back on emissions and save money as we move forward with these. So an example of a project that we did some work on, I think um, Jeff Martin, the previous IREC is on also, and I give a lot of credit to him for getting these projects started. He received some grants um, going down the list. There's the um, a lot of town solar where we get renewable energy credits and a set fee on electricity for the town. Uh, we did a large project at the emergency services building. That was obviously a, a total rebuild, um, but there was about $150,000 energy improvement project that um, occurred at that building and we got a 50,000 grant for that. Um, an exciting project I think is electric school buses. Again, a key win for Jeff Martin. Uh, they received three a grant that totally pays for the total cost of three school buses um, for Woodstock, and those will be placed right in the Woodstock High School parking lot. They're um, building a charging station down there as well. What I projects is these buses are basically huge batteries on wheels that can be um, with technology that's already around, and they're actually doing these projects in Burlington. I don't know. Did you ever was that included in the packet? Eric, about the um, electric yes. school buses in Burlington. Yeah. Okay, so I won't go out on that too long, but the real key with those is for resilience in a town with when there's an emergency outage, these buses could actually be driven to the office to your emergency centers and power those for, for quite a long time because they're these, you know, if you look at these buses, they're really just a huge battery on wheels. So again, that was a key win. For the IREC, um, the the really large projects we're focusing on now is the town hall building. There's the MERP program, municipal municipal energy resilience program. That is an opportunity to um, get grants up to five hundred thousand dollars to update their energy systems at the town hall. Which I think um, that's a great old building, but it does. I think I'm not telling anybody anything that needs a little bit of work on systems and insulation and weatherization, which is what that grant covers. Um, so far, we've got, uh, and I forget you're sitting right in that building. So, um, and sorry I couldn't join you in purpose in person tonight, but um, we did receive a $4,500 mini grant that can be used for a number of issues, including paying part of my uh, fee. So. Um, that's a consideration. I think we listed it that way in the chart. Um, we did also receive an energy assessment, which is another word for an energy audit. This is a level two audit of the entire building. I know you've had a lot of work done before, but this audit will, will really um, key in on the energy systems of the building and really define what needs to be done, where you can get the biggest bang for your buck for the energy spend, and hopefully get um, a, a nice grant to pay for that. The Merck grant's not the only grant. There's other sources of funding too that will, um, once we know exactly what is needed to be done, we can apply for those grants also. Uh, let's see, coming up, that's the big one. There's also, um, in my opinion, um, Woodstock is very, very well suited for electric vehicle chargers. Um, you're on a key route through um, from the interstate to some, you know, some of the nicest recreational areas in in Vermont, including Woodstock. Um, I see a lot of electric vehicles drive through uh, without a state plates. And the the beauty of electric vehicle chargers is these people will stop, and it, it's a, just a reason for them to attract them to town and charge up their vehicle and spend some time in town and support local businesses. And there's a, a quite a bit of grant money for those also. So one current project is identifying spots where those might be a possibility, and we'll be running that through the select. And I don't want to. I know this is a really busy night and a large agenda, so I will stop there and um, answer any questions. Or I can keep talking if you like too. No, no, no okay. <laughs> we, we we have a few questions. Far go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, who is on the current steering committee for the IREC program? For Woodstock, it is Ginevra with Sustainable Woodstock. And how often do you the, do you meet with the steering committee? We meet monthly and we post all our minutes on the T-Rourke website. 
So those are public documents ready for viewing. Thank you. Sure. And, and that's a key. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, nope. finish. No, I was just going to say that that I just want to be sure that you know I work for for you for the town and with the town manager. I I consult with the energy committee, but um, we want to make sure we're in line and working on projects that are really beneficial to that will benefit the town. So, I guess what my 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 question is, you know, we spending seven hundred and fifty thousand on upgrades already, and where where are the grants that we would promise from the beginning that we would potentially be getting. Is this um, that that's seven hundred fifty thousand is on the emergency services building? That's, no, that's the uh, that's six hundred forty-seven thousand. Six hundred forty-seven. Yeah. So we cut some stuff out there. Yeah. So that the six was was voted on by the residents of town meeting. Yeah. So I get you know um, there should be some. I guess the grant grant we haven't seen a lot of grants come this way, mm -hmm. and that's to me that's a concern. I mean, spending spending the money on, on the upgrades is one thing. Spending the money to be part of this, uh, having you part of the the, the solution, there's got to be some funding in my mind that comes back this way that at least pays for your salary. Mm -hmm. And potentially pays for more than that for these upgrades. Yes, agreed. I I, I know um, for that particular project there was a fifty thousand dollar grant for the hundred fifty thousand dollar energy upgrade, and and over time I think that I don't have that right in front of me, but I think that had a ten or eleven year payback, um, plus it greatly reduced emissions, but. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess I'm going to, I'll put this out there too, is uh, that is my goal. I mean, I, I any energy uh, manager worth their salt, and I'm putting myself on the line here, but I should be able to get grants or energy savings that pays for my salary that that covers that. Um, but I also want to stress that, you know, I'm, I'm basically in this position, I'm an employee of the town, and I'm here to work and manage projects and, and find grants and manage energy. I mean, a lot of this is managing ongoing energy savings and make sure, like you say, hey, we said we're going to, this project we said is going to save this much energy. Let's make sure we really do save that energy and, and do the tracking and verification and give your reports, which I am working now on um, an annual report that will show you what your energy spend is. But yeah, we want to see constant improvements there. Um, but if I work directly for the town, um, especially in this market, I know it, it's it's pretty hard to to find people to work. But um, you know, a lot of my my benefits are basically paid for by two rivers. So you know, this is a, a a good position I think where I can do some service for the town, and you're getting my services at at uh, you know a, a bit of the cost. And it's still you know it's not the cheapest one, but like I said, I think working together we can easily hit that target and um, make sure these energy savings are ongoing as well. That's really the key. When you do these projects is, is to keep tracking them and make sure we're getting those savings year after year. But you're also um, you know, helping um, reduce emissions and um, energy costs are gonna be going further and further up. I think it'll be a, a you know, larger and larger part of the budget. So it's, um, I think, important to really keep track of that. That's my pitch, I guess. So, Jeff, can I ask, um, thank you for putting this together. Um, it, for me, it sounds like you have, have either inherited a lot of these projects or, or come up with them in conversation from the steering committee. And I'm wondering um, if you would like more direction from the select board or, or what you need to be successful um, yeah. if you continue this contract. Yeah, I I think that would be, you know, I, I started in, in February and I think especially at this time of year when I, you know, I work for the town I work on, I'm on the planning commission, I know the budgeting, how challenging it is and how, you know, there's the roads to cover and um, so many other things we have to deal with, but um I, I do realize, yeah, and, and basically, you know, you're, you are paying my salary. It comes from you. So, yeah, I absolutely think I should be giving reports, you know, maybe every other month 
um, sit down and have a talk about what projects we're working on, what you want to see, what you think is important for the town. So, yes, I would, I would, sorry, that's a long answer. My short answer is yes, I think uh, we should have a little more interaction. I wonder if there's something that shouldn't, I, I mean, I think we're rewriting the town plan, the town, the planning commission's rewriting the town plan. I think this should be a large part of that conversation or this role should be a large part of that conversation and, and meeting the goals that we voted on in 2019 is when we voted on this, mm -hmm. I think. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think we need maybe more distinct goals to make this a successful program. I don't know what that would look like, but or or maybe we need more feedback from the community on what they'd like to see for these goals. Yeah, that'd be a good idea to have some public outreach. And I do work, I mean, you know, with Eric, there's there's things that pop up that, you know, might be kind of urgent right away. So um, that's the key. You know, Eric works with you closely and knows what's important with with you and in the, in, in the town from both ends, basically. So, um, you know, a key interface, I think, is with Eric. in the town as well so so i i apologize i had to switch um things and i can't figure out how to raise my hand um, i was looking at the town hall energy assessment and it looks like there was a grant of 16 and that we're eligible for a grant of 500 could you just discuss that and how likely that is and what and where we are in that process yeah the assessment has been granted um, that will be scheduled probably sometime in January, where they'll have the assessment done. The MERP grant, the Municipal um, Energy Resilience Program, is it puts a lot of emphasis on the energy burden, which is um, how much your average resident, it's all averages, so it's a little bit deceiving, but it's the average amount that an average citizen pays for energy, um, including um which i'm not sure i agree with but it also includes the uh, transportation what you pay on energy basically what you pay to put energy in your car um and they're going for towns that have a very high energy burden woodstock is on the low side um so that means you know i'm, I'm saying it's about 50 50 maybe slightly under that of of getting all of, of you know, getting a $500,000 grant, but I would expect we'd get at least some. And I know there's other grants that um, are focusing on energy resilience and buildings through um, USDA of all places and um, other opportunities as well. So, you know, th this is what I call a, a step grant or an opportunity is like a, like a stairway. We just keep going one step to the next. And the first step was apply for the mini grant. We got that. The next step is apply for the assessment. We receive that. And the next step will be to see what that points out. I think a lot of that we know already, but this will enforce that. And then we'll at least know what needs to be done. And then um, we obviously will, will apply for the MERP grant, but also we'll have specific information to apply for other grants as well, so. Roger? Yes. Yeah, as a, as a citizen, it would be really useful going forward um, if we could have a more detailed accounting or a more comprehensive accounting. Um, looking at this table, I'm sure it all makes sense, but I can't tell if the grants are offsetting the entire cost of the project or not. Um, so, you know, if we're doing something to this building that's going to cost $500,000 and we get a grant for $200,000, I'd like to see the total cost of the project and then income that offsets that. Um, so going forward, I think it would be really useful if all the communications on this had essentially a, a chart of accounts, you know, not that complicated, obviously, but just so we can see what the cost of the total project is. And great, maybe that cost is gonna be offset in five years by energy savings, maybe it's not, maybe it's an investment in reducing carbon, but, but I don't think at this point, it's hard for me to make judgments about some of these things because I, I just don't know how much they cost. 
and, and how much is being offset, or maybe they're all paid for by grants. I just don't know. So if we could just include that, that kind of a little more expanded data going forward. Thanks. Thank you. Um, it's all online, but did you want to come speak? One of you? Yeah, fine up. Who came up with one here? Am I just saying both names and then? Yeah. I'm Sky Kelly. Um, I'm from Woodstock Town. I'm Lila Beckwith. I'm also from Woodstock Town. Um, we're both seniors at Woodstock Union High School, um, and we are here representing Change World Kids, a youth-led nonprofit in Woodstock. Um, in 2019, we led a climate emergency march from the high school to the town hall. This led to our working with Sustainable Woodstock to petition the town to consider a resolution declaring a climate emergency. This resolution was passed by the select board at a town meeting in 2020. An important part of this resolution was for the village and town operations to become net zero by 2030. The energy coordinator is a necessary role for Woodstock and six other towns to figure out the best ways to make us net zero and then make it happen. The climate emergency resolution was already passed by the select board and the town. On behalf of our generation and future generations, we ask you to fund the energy coordinator position and to continue to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for so long, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's two people online, Jeff Martin and Linda. Both of the hands raised. Okay. Jeff, you want to go first? Yep. Hi, everyone. I'm Jeff Martin, um, board chair of Sustainable Woodstock. And um, I didn't catch the students' names, but uh, that was kind of exactly <laughs> What I wanted to say, they they said it perfectly. Um, so sustainable Woodstock, we we've been um, advocating for the IREC position um, from the beginning, and and I think as Jeff Grout mentioned earlier, um, continue to uh, Ginevra Wetmore, who who unfortunately she uh, couldn't be here this evening, but um, our executive director um, is serving on the steering committee, uh, representing uh, Woodstock um, and and helping to guide. Uh, uh, the IREX uh, work uh, related to Woodstock. Um, so, so we've been involved in this position um, uh, for since its creation, and uh, know that it is uh, critically important to meeting that uh, net zero by 2030 goal. Um, you know, as an organization, we're working on all things climate and energy, but um, we're we're really focused on the community level. Um, for example, we just finished. Uh, uh, a window dressers build uh, where we built a, well over uh, 200 uh, window inserts um, for for uh, low to moderate income residents in the community at no cost. Um, that'll help them uh, stay warm and, and save money. Um, and we're and we're doing other other work in the community. Um, but we are an organization uh, with a, a staff of two and otherwise volunteer led. Um, and so, you know, we, we can't fully support the town in reaching that net zero goal. And, and that's really exactly what, uh, the IREC role, um, you know, has been doing and, and, and can continue to do is provide that staff time and, and the technical, uh, expertise, uh, to help continue to advance us, um, towards, towards that goal. Um, and I just wanted to to mention one other thing. Ray Ray uh, brought up the um, grant funding, and um, I, I just wanted to to reiterate that you know the electric uh, school bus grant funding. I know that's not um, directly uh, a, a town uh, thing. It's you know the school district, but it does benefit uh, Woodstock uh, taxpayers. That was a one point two million. I think a one point two million dollar grant. Um, so that would pay for the IREX time uh, for many, many years, if, if that's what we're, we're looking to do. But I think for, from our standpoint, you know, the most important thing is continuing to, um, you know, hold ourselves to account to that uh, uh, net zero by 2030 goal. So thank you. Thank you. I would also like to speak in support of funding the uh, energy energy coordinator position and if we're going to make progress toward meeting the energy goals and commitments that change the world kids reminded us of we need someone with expertise to do the research and apply for grants and guide us in in what is possible and in what is 
most efficient for our town and in, and what is most cost effective. And I think that um, the cost now in funding this position will mean that later on we'll, we'll save money and we won't have to fund this position in the future because we'll be on a path saving energy and saving energy costs. And I'm, I'm worried that if we try to use very energetic and, and helpful volunteers, we'll still have limited knowledge and we won't do it in a cost efficient way. Even the most energetic volunteers in our community will not be as effective as a as an energy coordinator that we pay to focus on energy matters and to get the knowledge and and have the experience of seeing how other towns handle their energy goals and in researching grants that are available. And I think that we're lucky to have a professional energy coordinator now and we had the other Jeff in the past working on our behalf for this town and I would like to see um, Jeff Grau continue working for us this year. I think we can benefit from his expertise now and get grants and systems for the future in place and, and we'll reduce our fuel costs and, and I think we need to fund it now so that we can save money later. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the regional energy coordinator? Hi, I'm Peter Bowen, Town of Woodstock. Um, also on the board of Sustainable Woodstock and uh, in support of the IREC position. And um, I think a, a recent thing that I don't, I don't have all the information on, but I, I gather that the police department is purchasing several new vehicles. Is that accurate? Yep. They were approved by the trustees to buy two new uh, hybrid vehicles. Okay. And did that go through? Was that brought to the IREC coordinator? It was not, no. Okay. And why is that? Um, I don't think we've done it in the past. So the decision was brought to the trustees and they have their right to make decisions they want to and wasn't ever brought over there. Mm -hmm. I, I just, as a citizen and as a person who's very focused on this, um, there, there are police vehicles now that are fully electric, and this is a great opportunity for the town to save money and also to reduce fossil fuel use. And to me, that highlights why this position is so important in, in procurement, just looking at issues of... Thank you. I mean, if we, vehicles were the village, so we have... We had nothing to do with that decision. Yeah. Okay. Overall, though, yeah. uh, the, no, I understand the point saying. I'm trying to make is that, you know, when we're looking at any form of procurement in the town or the village, we should really be looking at the overall purpose. Okay. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, somebody has their hand up. Donnie. Donnie. Hi, thank you. Um, Donnie Sturtevall, uh, Town of Woodstock as well. Um, I, I had a couple of thoughts, but to keep things brief, I know the agenda is going long here. Um, I'd, I'd also support the select board's consideration of refunding the IREC position, but I think kind of echoing Peter's comments here, um, Sure, we're petitioning the board to fund the position, but honestly, more than that, I think we're asking the select board to take up the charge and take its climate goals voted on, approved by the town. Seriously, here working alongside IREC, um, not like not only does that make our town and community more resilient, um, there are certainly financial savings as another prepared information documents. Um, and I think as as Jeff, uh, the first Jeff that spoke was talking about, like, like we would really appreciate the engagement of the select board in uh, determining how to best take advantage of his skills and the combined enthusiasm of the community for this kind of work. Um, I'm also a member of the Board of Sustainable Woodstock, and there's a lot of people with a lot of great ideas. Uh, we would 
we would certainly like not just funding of the position, but some engagement and help and take advantage of all that potential in our community. Anyone else? Oh, Madeline. Hi, I'm Madeline Reynolds uh, with Sustainable Woodstock as well and supporting the position and everybody who has spoken before me. I do not have a big speech. I think everyone here has spoken very well on behalf of this position and for looking towards the future to address the uh, issues that we will have in climate and uh, energy going forward. So um, thank you. Thank you for this. Town Hall. Okay, so um, I've been here for 10 months, I believe. Um, and I'm probably aware of two committees that work on Town Hall Foundation. Um, I don't think we're any closer to uh, a decision on what to do with Town Hall. So with some internal conversations we've had from the board, um, I thought it was more to kind of just maybe have a conversation where we want to look at going forward. Um, one idea that I've got brought up um, was if the planning commission and I could, could look at it. Um, I know right now the planning commission is working on a few things. Uh, I don't think they'd have time today to look at it. Um, potentially, maybe in March or April they could. Um, I've been approached by uh, Pentangle um, saying they want the opportunity to raise um, the funds to at least do the necessary work that has to be done outside. Um, we've also talked about looking at other options as well. Um, so I think again, just a, a conversation of where the board wants to direct resources to look into a solution for uh, the current issue we have with Town Hall. Um, I think that I've, Greg and I went on the tour a few weeks ago. Um, it was very helpful and informative. Um, certainly we've read a lot about it, but seeing it in person was very helpful. Um, there's no doubt that, that a lot of work needs to be done on this building and, and not inexpensive work. Um, I think my concern moving forward is you know, with this committee is, is I think we need to establish clarity, um, more clarity, I would say, between Pentangle and town hall um, or, or town offices um, and their use of the space. I think if Pentangle wants to raise the money, I would like just a very clear arrangement and, and parameters as to how that's going to happen. And, um, yeah, I, I would like to see those. I, I think that there's an, a, an enmeshment right now um, that maybe prevents us from having a really productive conversation. And um, I, I, yeah, that's, that's where I am right now. I would like a lot more clarity moving forward, or at least to take steps towards clarity. I think that, that would look like maybe cleaning up their lease a little bit or understanding what their needs are moving forward and offering them the chance to raise this money with the understanding that um, with whatever understanding we would have and what would we would need as 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 a town i don't know if that i don't know if you agree with that craig after what we saw but yeah there's a lot to be done that to me actually yeah. um where the where to start or who you start um renovation is extremely expensive but i don't know what other choice there is at this point if i can yeah, sorry um so i think it was clear at least i got a, a, it fairly clear at our last meeting i think um both john specter and and roger we we talked about the fact that we really haven't looked at other alternatives and I thought that that was the direction we had decided to go on is, is to, you know, before we commit to spending, which I think we need to be clear, wasn't just the first 3 million, but a total of 16 million 
on this building that we really need to do our due diligence and look at what are the needs of this building, both for the arts and as a municipal building, and can that be done more efficiently elsewhere or within this building? And I, I just, before we green light anybody to start raising money, I think we need to have that exploration. And I know we've talked about doing a working committee. I don't know if that's something we should we should do. I mean, I know we've had a lot of committees, but we've never charged a committee with that goal precisely. And I, I think something that needs to be discussed too is, um, I went to one of the locations that the, has been discussed in the past as a possible alternative town hall, um, this space there. I don't know what the cost would be to renovate that space for necessary town hall. And I don't know who could tell us. So I don't know if it's potential of hiring someone who would come into these locations and say, this would cost X amount of dollars to turn it into a municipal office. And what we actually need in a municipal office um, as well. So I don't know if that's a direction we need to look at too, whether it's the planning commission or the subcommittee, uh, looking into those questions too, because everyone can go to a location and say, this is great or this is not great, but what, what's the cost going to be to actually turn that into a functioning office is something we need to have too, to Susan's point, to know if that's an actual alternative, alternative or not. Um, so I think that's something we need, to just, we need to figure out as well, how we want to approach. You know, I think it was the first committee might have looked at revamping all of Town Hall. The next committee that kind of looked at how to just keep Town Hall as is and fix it to some degree. Um, and if we if we were to move somewhere else to stay here, what's the cost going to be associated with that decision? Um, and I don't have the answer to how best to do that, but I think we should have someone or something look into it um, that maybe have a little more non-biased view on what should happen next. Yeah, and I think the, the planning committee would be the ideal. Take the personalities out of the. I have to say, I don't, I don't agree. I think it should stay within some members of the select board. I, you know, we're the ones that ultimately, I think are responsible for the decision. So I, I think a working committee is a better alternative. I'm open to either one. I mean, it could also be a work committee that works with the planning commission as well. If, if you know, if you want to form a work committee that could then be the liaison to the planning commission, you know, when the planning commission has time, you know, I don't think, I don't think they get on today, but in three months from now, there could be some groundwork that have that we and Greg do in the pass off and say, we need more information on that. And, um, you know, I, 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 I do, Town Hall's issue we have to solve. Uh, I don't know the bandwidth of any board members or the planning commission right now. I know the board members are going to be going through the budget conversations. We're going to have a meeting, um, the holidays as well. So I, I don't know if this is a conversation we also have next month and month after, or if we want to appoint two people now or the planning commission. Um, I don't think we have to make a final decision, but I think, again, it's really just have to keep talking about until we know what we want to do. I think we we need to wait till we have a full board anyway mm -hmm. before you I mean, that's not here um give everything to carrie while she's not here just what else can we give carrie while she's <laughs> injuring someone in santa fe i just think it makes sense to have a full board if we're gonna if we're gonna have a committee well we would only appoint two members so right but i think we still should have the full board to discuss which two members it's going to be I, I think there's two on either side of you that would be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Easy for you to say when you save her and you're going to do this, Susan. But we don't have enough I'm getting votes close to, to my make, COVID bedtime, I have to tell you. <laughs> we don't have enough votes to, to um, put them on a committee, though. It's two to two. I mean, voted against themselves. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think there are two questions online. So uh, Wendy and Jill both have a question or a comment. When, uh, Jill, you want to go first? So I think a working committee is a great idea. Both teams who've worked on it so far have a lot of knowledge, and it would be a really good idea to reach out and get at least one member from each of the committees so that you don't repeat what's already been done. 
and then maybe somebody impart somebody who hasn't been involved who will ask more uh, some more different questions um and you so then we've worked out a group of maybe five people uh that's a possible composition uh wendy Thank you. Sorry, I was out of uh, sync. Um, thank you. I um I agree with Jill. I agree with the momentum to take a uh, a rounded look at the concerns. What I would like to encourage uh, everyone to consider is what town hall means beyond bricks and mortar, and what it means beyond dollars and cents. Um location access visibility etc and I, I, it worries me to lose that <clears throat> center point location just I, I would like the the committee to consider the the abstracts that go into the center of a town in the village etc um the heart of the village i also would like to suggest, I mean, in, in speaking to the lease and the meshment with Pentangle, um, <clears throat> Pentangle's a tenant, Pentangle Arts, and is running custodial, running the theater. But the building could also function in other ways uh, to other tenants, potentially, um, in, in looking at the, the municipal needs and the scope of the building just for other revenue sources is a thought I want to throw out there. So two two different two added dimensions to the future committee's considerations. Thanks. I don't just want to take on one more thing and then um I just think to uh not to throw anything more on my plate um but if there's a committee I think I'd like to be involved. Um think statue gives the town minute or missile manager um power kind of over town hall so i think it's important that uh in this role i have a at least first hand knowledge in those conversations and um so i just ask that i'd be involved in whatever so the committee gets involved more so than usual um much to the chagrin of my wife <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm rather surprised to hear that there was no options considered because I remember sitting in the presentation with Jonathan Spector where they talked about everything from beautiful green room and full out extending the building, buying the property and a part of the property next door to getting rid of the problematic stage, making it shorter, putting up a, um, and just having it as a, as a movie theater, right? So I'm not imagining that those options were explored. Well, Options that haven't been explored is relocating. The, that, that was actually that was one of the very first things that was explored. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, but but not not financially. Nobody's come up with a, a, a dollar. Are figure. you talking about buying a new building and and just moving the whole thing? Because Jonathan Spector also did come up with, uh, you know, he came up with a valuation of what we could sell this building for and how much it would cost to do that, um, to to move to move the building. And then there was a whole lot of discussion on how nobody wanted to move the building from center from the center of town. So this actually did happen. But I just want to, what I really want to say is, is that we're talking about potentially buying. Um, a water company upgrading the power plant uh, the sewer plant all this other kind of stuff a new school let's make this the cheapest possible thing and let's just do that i mean we don't really need another stage there's a stage in um, artistry there's a stage two stages in white river junction there's a stage at the high school enough you know let's just stop spending and thank you Um, so I appreciate the tenor of this conversation a lot, because I think the last time we discussed this, we were essentially presented with a fait accompli, which was going to commit to saving the back of the building, which would then be sunk cost that would basically lead us to the entire 16 million or 20 million, what, who knows what it's going to ultimately end up being project. So I really appreciate 
I appreciate what you said about kind of disentangling this decision from from the the perfectly reasonable interests of Pentangle um, and and making the decision based on both the hard economic facts of what we can afford to do and what's the best solution while also taking into account the fact that it, there are some softer things that are involved. So, you know, it's nice to have the town hall right here. Um, and maybe there's a solution to that that doesn't mean spending 16 or $20 million. But I'll go along with Susie. It's going to be increasingly hard for people to live in this town who are not wealthy enough to spend good Lord knows how many millions of dollars renovating that building on Central Street um, if we are committing to one multi-million dollar project after another. Um, that's just the tax burden is going to become unbearable if we don't make some hard decisions about economy. And so I do appreciate that you're that you're advocating approaching this in a planful manner. And I, I I'm, I'm sorry to um, make your life more miserable, but I do agree that a kind of a business head being intimately involved in these discussions, however you formulate the committee or the or the group doing it, um, would make a lot of sense. So thanks. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Susan, you want to wait till December? So, um, I think, well, could we just like back up? And I think we need to identify kind of like what the processes are that are currently happening, which is that the current subcommittee said last meeting they were going to get us some hard information about one possibility, which would be if we did commit to the $3 million, million what grants would be available? Um, right, they were going to follow up with that. Yeah. So that's one avenue. We have another avenue, which is relocation, which we might want to form a subcommittee to explore. And then we have is there a third option? Mm -hmm. um, no. So the, the third the option is to have a working committee which looks at all possibilities, not just one of relocation. But the there there is a list. Um, it came from our working group last time. There's probably even more than that. And you just work them out financially and then you make the decision based on the numbers to see which ones are really possible. So yes, there's all sorts of emotional things involved, but let's get the numbers first and then do the emotions. We want to see if do I expect to listen to some of that? I thought it was actually the current town hall committee was going to look into the grants. Okay. Yeah. No, the current, the current. I'm sorry. May I speak? Yeah, sure. No, the current committee has now disbanded, is my understanding of the last meeting. So although they owe you numbers about 3.5 million, what they've really done is say, if we want to maintain the building, it costs us 16.5 million. That's one option. The other committee said, if you want to enhance the building, that's 24 million. That's another option. There are a, there are maybe 10 other options that need to be looked at. And so we don't really need anybody to find out what grants are available for the $3 million option because it's one of 10. So that shouldn't hold up people starting to work on what the options are and what they cost. So I... No, I, I just to move this conversation forward, I would be happy to compile all this information and maybe share it with the board before the next meeting, and then we can decide whether or not we want to elect folks for a subcommittee. Yeah, yeah, that works. Okay. Susan, do you want to speak? Yeah. What, what, Susan, Susan, what, Susan, you I'm not. You. Yeah, sorry, I'm not clear what you're compiling and what and why that wouldn't be compiled by a committee. Sorry, just. Um, I, I just think that there's a there's a, a a discussion that should be taking place with you know I think as Jill suggested getting some people that were on those committees because um, you're doing precisely what 
what she indicated is possibly reinventing the wheel. So I, I guess I'm just not sure why we aren't moving forward with the committee rather than having one person do work that I think has already been done. Okay, I, I mean, I think it would be to outline the scope of the committee, unless we have that, that scope. Do we have a good idea of what, does everybody feel confident about what the scope of the committee would be? I, I don't think we've really gone, as a board, has gone to what the scope should be. Uh, we've heard from people tonight of what their options are. Um, but I, I think if we're, if it's the board's feeling right now they don't want to make a recommendation on committee members, I mean, I don't see the harm in waiting another four weeks to form a committee. And if we want to have a, a definite scope at that point, I think it's fine if we want to kind of have pair of the two members and you go define the scope after you're talking to a bunch of people. And I think that's also an option as well. Um, but I think, I think if we, once we designate a committee or vote for I think we do have to give them instruction of what we want them to do. You know, people are saying there's 12 options. We want them to look at 12 options. We want to look at, you know, a few options to, you know, so do we want them to go off by themselves and come back with their own answers? Um, um, has it just to create a, a committee to take a look and sooner or later? Because uh, I think that's happened in the past. We want to make sure whatever we have, they have a definite idea of what we're looking for and also part of a timeline of when they get back to us. And so it could be as simple as, you know, a timeline and, and, a, and a process we want to go forward with something. I, I I think put it off till next week. Susan, how do you feel about putting it off? Till? I you know that's that's fine. I just think we put a lot off. <laughs> well, how how about a how about a step that's somewhere in between that speaks to what you have been discussing, which is a um, why. Next meeting, why don't you get ask for some proposals um, of what a scope could be? Because that's where we went off track for the last two years. The scope wasn't clear. I agree with what Eric said. And so if there's if somebody started to define the scope, that would be a great place for a discussion. Other business. Other business. Thank you all. Have a good Thanksgiving, uh, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, two of abatement requests. The two. The first one is eight plus. Can we get four or nine? Doesn't look it. Um, people still online, um, uh, but they claim they never received the bill. Um, they haven't received the previous years and asked in the way of the interest of I can start as the unsympathetic person on these things. <laughs> I mean, if, if they'd been paying, if they've been paying sewer for, I forget how many years, they they kind of know when it's due and and you know i yeah i agree so no, i would no. i would move that we um deny the abatement request Do a second a second all those in favor aye, aye. aye. <laughs> the next one is a person um they're currently in a what is it a, a two or a double room fee. Um, the husband uh, passed away in June, and what they're asking for is going forward on the sewer bill. They'd be the described as a single room instead of a double. Um, the assumption is the only one person is living there now. So it's not for a payment; it's just for going forward. Yeah, um, we did that with some I mean, of the condos, so I I don't have a problem with that. Um, I don't know if anyone else does. No. So there's precedent for it? Yes. So this has yeah. happened before? Yes. Yeah, yeah early on when I started, someone. Yeah, there's somebody down uh, the condominium behind uh, the senior center. So. And we currently have an imperfect system to this. We go by 
from just like single double yeah. family. Yeah. And it's really based on trust and everything else. So it goes by the people that are actually living there, not so much. It, it goes like a, it was basically all single, double, or family. Um, and then we kind of hope they're honest with us. And that's the if result. they're not metered, right? No, if they're not right. metered. If they're not metered. I would entertain a motion to approve the uh, use of that with 28 Valley View Road from two to one. Sorry, I have one more question on this. Yeah. This would be just for this user. This wouldn't be for the property, like after, no, she's, after no. she's. No, just for her, yeah. Just okay, for just her. for her. Mm -hmm. I would make that motion. I will okay. say. Uh, sorry to interrupt. It does stay for the property. We don't change it when someone else moves in. Just, it, just want that clarified. It doesn't matter for this particular thing. Unless we know for some reason there's more people in there, right? Yeah, but we have zero way of knowing that. Okay. Well, for instance, if a if a couple buys the property and it's going from it's going into two names, then you would know that it's likely two people live there. Yes, right. And we could also at some point change the, change the ordinance that would make it just for the current use. Right. But I think for now, the way everything stands, if one person, if, if, if Julie's the only one living there, then she deserves to only be assessed for one person. Right. Yeah, I agree. So we had a motion. Susan, you made the motion? I did. Okay, second by anyone? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Rule of the minutes. Uh, executive session. Oh, huh? executive, oh session. executive session. I've never had to do this, so let me know if there's something I have to do, or do I just um, sit here? I think Nikki does something. Yeah, Nikki should uh, we'll open up a uh, break off break away room for us. And, you and I go it. automatically in that? Uh, no, I'll show you if accept. Yeah, you'll have to accept once I do it. Okay. But I just need a motion first. Oh. <laughs> I move that we go into executive session to discuss a contract. First, and second? I don't have the statute in front second. of me. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Did you guys just keep kick people out of the room before Zoom? For executive yes. session? Yeah. Most of right next to the door so they can hear. Yeah. <laughs> White noise machine. Yeah. Um, oh, do we need to join? We need to join, so. Yeah, okay. Oops. Sorry. Okay. Uh, approval of the minutes. Do you have any direct? I think Susan gave them to Nikki and Nikki made the updates already. Okay. Yeah, I haven't seen the changes, but the October 24th minutes had some errors or some not errors, but just things that needed to be clarified. Nikki, did you make those changes already? I did, yes. Yeah. Um, so you don't have them in front of you, but you can uh, approve them with. Uh, uh... I, I don't know what they say. So, I mean, it was, it, there was some wording that was just seemed incorrect. So I would move we um, pass the October 10th meeting, but I, I personally would like to see the October 24th minutes before I vote on them. Okay. So we have There are two, there are joint minutes and regular yeah, October minutes. For October 10th. Oh, I'm sorry. October I'm looking at the 17th. agenda. Yeah, October 17th. See, 24th. 
my machine. And well then. I have, okay, I, it's the October 10th and the October 11th minutes that I would um, move we approve. And hold off on the 17th. So it's I not would, the 24th, yeah. it's the 17th. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the agenda, which says yeah. 10th, okay. 10th, and 24th. Okay, um, so is there a motion to approve the minutes from October 10th and 11th? Yep. Second? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Minutes are approved. And is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.